I'm Paul Check, and welcome back to my little mini series, What is Organics? Today we are going to do part three, which is titled The Rhizosphere, which means the root space. So, a little brief re recap. I started off in part one by talking about pesticides, some of the dangers, and some of the basic concepts of organic. In part two, I explained more about the mechanics of soil function and how microorganisms work and the interactions with the earth, the moon, the sun, and the cosmic forces. I talked about the different types of energies, paramagnetic affinity to the south pole of a magnet and said that the sun produces paramagnetic monopoles, the moon produces paramagnetic light, and I talked about that there are classes of stones that have various levels of paramagnetic energy in them. And I said that temples, uh, round towers, and almost every healing site ever found in the world was found to have extremely high paramagnetic ratings by Phil Callahan. And I referred you to some of his books as well. Then I showed you that the soil microorganisms use water, conserve water, and use their very intelligent abilities to couple the right minerals in paramagnetic diamagnetic profiles to produce a crumb-like structure in the soil called humus which works as a cosmic antenna to draw sunlight, moonlight, and starlight into the earth to energize the soil which puts it into polarity with water, earth, and tissue which are diamagnetic, oxygen, sunlight, and moonlight are paramagnetic sources of energy and I showed that the two coupled together produces relatively opposing but complementary polarities that produce work potential generating an electrical field. I showed that magnetism runs parallel to the surface of the earth and that the electrical field goes vertical. So today we're going to continue our discussion and we're going to talk about what is going on in the root space of plants what those microorganisms are doing in concert with the intelligent uh, plant species, the, the consciousness within each plant that makes its own unique products, and how not only that's important to you, but why understanding this becomes very, very relevant to purchasing foods and supplements. So with our preface, now I'll orient you to the diagram. Here's the, a picture of a tree. Here is the rhizosphere or root space. Most people are completely unconscious of what's below the earth, but the tree below the earth is often bigger than the one above the earth. How much bigger? Well, let me give you an example. One corn plant can have 6,000 miles of main rootlets, and when combined with main roots, and when combined with its rootlets, can have 26,000 miles of roots. One corn plant. So you're talking about a massive, massive network of rootlets that would be very much like your capillary beds. Inside this space is a living space. That's why it's called a rhizosphere. And here, if you have organic soil, you have a proper balance of water, minerals, diamagnetic energy, paramagnetic energy, which keeps the microorganisms warm, fed, and healthy. And then, of course, you have them eating each other. Then you've got fertilizer from animal poop, dead organic matter in nature. So this creates a living matrix, which really, in a sense, has its own consciousness. It's just like a computer has many parts or a brain has many parts, but they all work together. This system not only works together, but research today shows that plant species not only serve to support each other, but they support other plants that are symbiotic, such as moving water and resources to different locations of a garden or a place in nature. So clearly there's a lot more consciousness going on than people attribute uh, to plants and microorganisms. Now what I wanted to point out very clearly here, one, remember that earth and water are yin. Yin means energy is drawn inward and is anabolic. So when a woman gets pregnant, she enters a yin cycle, her energy goes inward and she begins to expand out from the center. 
That's yin energy. Yang is the opposite. Yang is a centrifugal energy. It pushes outward but contracts inwardly. So a very simple way to think of this is if you take um, a piece of sponge and soak it in water, it will draw the energy inward and the sponge would swell, just like if you took a piece of dry bread and put it in water, it would draw water inward and swell. That's yin. If you take that same, same piece of bread and throw it in a hot frying pan, it will expand its energy in the water outward, but the bread itself will continue to contract until there's nothing left but ash. So the yang energy is the expansive energy, and the yang energy creates levitation. If you heat the bread with water in it, the water molecules will begin to levitate. So yang energies have a pulling force toward the sun. Yin energies have a drawing force and a holding force. So the polarity of the two creates the electrical field, and that's what plants grow on. That's what gives them their base energy for life and survival. And as I showed, the balance of those energies in the root space is controlled largely by microorganisms and environmental influences. And then, of course, man. Well, that's a long story. I think you can get that one. So now what I wanted to share is, is really something special. And you can learn more about this studying Arden Anderson's book, Science and Agriculture, and some of the other resources that he refers to, and many others. If you're really interested, you can go to the British Soil Association, the New Zealand Soil Association, and almost any soil association in the world, and you get lots of this good information. Now, what the research shows, conclusive and very good scientific research, is that within the root space, the microorganisms produce, for plants, trees, anything that's got roots, amino acids and proteins, hormones. Research shows that practically every single, if not every single hormone in the human body can be found in the root space of plants. I'll say that again. Pretty much every single hormone in the human body can be found in the root space of plants being manufactured by plants and microorganisms. Minerals and trace minerals. Obviously, the soil is full of minerals and trace minerals. Now, as a side note, these minerals are not available to you. Plants do not eat stones. They don't eat dirt. People misunderstand that. Symbiotic organisms called mycorrhiza, which are fungi, excrete very powerful acids and dissolve rocks and liquefy the minerals and feed them to the plants in trade for the sap or the sugar of the plant. So here again you see that we could not have bioavailable minerals if it were, were not for microorganisms like the mycorrhiza fungi doing their work to transform matter, dead matter, into things that we can animate as life. We also have enzymes and cofactors that are very, very heavily present in these rhizospheres and in the plants themselves. Now, the key point to remember is that if it's not here, it can't be here. So if this was an apple tree, whatever's missing down here cannot show up in your apple. If you're picking strawberries, whatever's missing here does not show up in your strawberries. Better yet, whatever animals you're eating, if the food they're eating was missing here, it won't show up here, which means the animal itself becomes malnourished. So if you eat sick animals from sick soil, well, I think the story plays itself out. Also, in the root space of plants and in the plants, we find fats, oils, and carbohydrates or sugars. Now, I don't know if you've noticed anything about this list, but ladies and gentlemen, this is what you are. You're made of this. And if any of these things are missing, you will not be a healthy person. Your body will start to work incorrectly. Your brain will start to work incorrectly. Your emotions will start going haywire. Your sense of what is important becomes distorted. And most of your time, energy, and money is spent chasing around uh, medical doctors because you need pills and props and wraps and straps and all that crap when really 98% of this stuff, we'll call it 95%, comes from diet and lifestyle factors, of which food is 
absolutely essential. So here we are now to the punchline. In part two, I showed you how the microorganisms work and how they interact with nature and how the energy flows. Here's what we want to look at now. Whatever you do to damage the microorganisms through the improper use of farming procedures, which there are many that I've written about and teach about in my courses, but particularly the use of chemical fertilizers, herbicides, fungicides, rodenticides, pesticides, all of those chemicals wipe out the microorganism population and create huge imbalances in the soil and lead to nutrient deficient plants. Now anything that you do to the soil and damage the microorganisms is going to directly affect the quantity and quality of amino acids or proteins, hormones, vitamins, minerals, trace minerals, enzymes, cofactors, fats, oils, carbs, and sugars. Most of what people eat is crap, garbage, poison, dead plants. The plants themselves are miserable. Look at how many of these potatoes and things, tomatoes, you eat a tomato, it's just like a bag of sick water. There's not even any flavor there and you think you're getting a deal. When your food does not have it and you go out to a doctor or even natural therapist and you get put on supplements, you are also making another big mistake if the supplements themselves are of any less quality than the source that they should have come from, which is organic, properly raised, properly managed, properly cared for, non-toxic plants. Remember, you can't make chicken salad out of chicken shit. Only Mother Nature can do that. So if the vitamins and the supplements that you're buying came from the same kind of source materials, which 98% of them do, all you're doing is spending more money on concentrated crap that will not do anything but keep other people rich and keep you chasing problems. And in my next part of this series, we will look at what is called the vitamin complex, which I'm sure will be quite shocking and interesting for many of you even those of you with degrees in nutrition. I'll see you then.